Hey, today uh, I'm going to be talking about how I, um, I'm using my Apple iPad and my Apple Pencil and working in Procreate to do some of my most recent pages as far as the artwork. I'm, I'm penciling everything and also inking everything uh, and even coloring as well for that matter uh, using Procreate. So I'm just going to talk about the pens that I use specifically for inking within Procreate. So uh, this is my comic book series here, The Realm Ethereal. Uh, this just happens to be a page I released a few weeks back. I'm going to switch over to Procreate and I've got this page here. Um, I have some, kind of some artwork ready here, kind of like the page we just saw on my website. So here's the pencil artwork. Uh, I'm just using, uh, again, Procreate. Um, for this example, what I want to show first is the pen that I'm using, specifically the one that I am like using about probably for about 90% of the artwork that you're seeing on the page. And that pen will be this IGB Crow Quill pen. Uh, the IGB Crow Quill pen comes from, uh, uh, I guess it's a, it's a someone who creates, a, you know, content or pen maker or some kind of, you know, asset creator uh, called Ink Gang Boss. And I found this set on the website Creative Market. I'll put a link in the description below where you can pick up this pen if you like it as well. Uh, I do have an affiliate link there. So if you do pick up this pen set here, this digital pen set, I should say a digital brush from Procreate, I'll get a little, little change on that. Not a whole lot, but every little bit helps, right? So let's uh, get started here. So this set here has from IGB Gang, IGB Crow Quill Pen has 11 brushes. And what's cool about this one is this one particular set that I have is I'm only really using the one pen, to be quite honest. I'm using the Crow Quill pen. And I have it set up here, Crow Quill pen. This is kind of what it looks like. I have enlarged it so you can see this on the screen, um, the kind of edges it makes. Uh, it can get pretty fine and then it can get pretty thick and then it can really taper down to like a wisp. So when you look at this pen, uh, the mark that it makes, one of the things I like to look at is what is the actual, like the the shape of the pen itself, the, the brush. And when I tap on that, uh, get that bigger, it's, it's kind of like this hourglass shape, I would say. If you look at that, make that larger here. See, it just kind of has this shape. And if I take like an actual crow quill pen here that I have, I um, don't know if this will show up well on the camera. I'll try and zoom in tighter here. Maybe we can get that to work. There we go. You take a look at this characteristic here, like as you know with the Crow Quill pen, or if you don't know, if you push down on it, it will it will kind of split. Um, let's see if I can show this here with my piece of paper here. Envelope. Check this out and see if we can do this here. So there's a Crow Quill pen. I push down on it. I don't know if that shows, but that. See how that splits there? So I think what's happening is when we see that split, like in, on the real Crow Quill pen, that's what the digital version here is trying to create, or trying to mimic. And if I draw with this like really fine, and this is really magnified, you can see how it kind of has this little effect where you can barely see this little notch here which I'm assuming is kind of like that little little split in the, the, the pen itself and the nib there, the quill, pro quill pen. But anyway, I really like this brush. I think a lot of it has to do with just the amount of control that it has and the variety and the line weights as I'm, as I'm drawing here. Uh, it also just has just a really good feel on my pad. And keep in mind, I'm not using any kind of special tip on my pencil here, nor does my screen on my iPad have any protective like cover on it. Uh, I tried it once, I really didn't like it. The version that I bought for like a screen cover, uh, it just made the uh, the artwork underneath really blurry for me. And maybe I, I should have tried a different one, but I got I got rid of it as soon as I figured out that it was not good for me to draw or paint on, on my iPad with a screen protector on there. So I'm using mostly just uh, the tools that come, the iPad the way it comes, uh, out of the box, so to speak. So with these pens, 
I'm going to erase all these pens, pen marks here. Whoops, don't want to do that. Just do some tap, two finger tap to undo. I'm going to talk about a couple of other pens that I like to use since I am, since we're on this topic here. Um, another pen I like using is the technical pen. And the technical pen just is just straight up, it's out, comes it with Procreate, as far as I know. Um, I like it because, and again, I've got it really magnified here. I haven't enlarged 100%, but it's just, it's a different line weight altogether. Like this is like really like 100% of the, the, the brush size and you see how like fine it is. And keep in mind that I normally don't draw it at this thickness here of 100%. I'm usually down probably maybe 30 or 20 or even less than that. But the line itself is just really like perfect for like buildings uh, or putting in like little details in costumes, uh, a costume or anything that is anything you can really think about as far as like that for as a, at least in my workflow when I'm drawing something stuff, anything that's like inanimate, like a building, a, a car. Uh, I just I like using this pen uh, also for inking my borders on my comic book pages. You know, pull, hold, snap. It's just an overall good pen to use for just making crisp, clean lines. If I zoom in here, you can see like the edge, the mark it makes is just very uniform. It's straight and it's just perfect really for straight lines, I think. Um, let's go ahead and clear all that off the page. And I'm gonna talk about another pen that I use. I like using a pen called a brush called ink bleed this one here I zoom in see that edge it has like a really rough it almost looks like a like it could be like i don't know carpet or like torn edge of a paper it just has kind of a fuzzy look to that and what i like about that is it, it can help me if i'm drawing something where i need to kind of give like this and a jagged or a rough look to it uh, it's just a nice variety in the texture as far as the different pens that I would use for inking my comics. And it's a nice one to use maybe for foliage or maybe something to describe as old or worn out. So I like using this pen for that particular, to impart that particular texture or feeling in my drawings. So that's that with that pen. Uh, I think I've got one more that I use is this brush here, this pen called, and I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but I'll, I'll take a, a stab at it, stab at it here. I guess I call it Jasinski or Gesinski ink. And it also is a pen that is, comes with Procreate as far as I know. It's just one that is in the application itself. And I'm gonna blow this one up here. I'm gonna pump up the size of it and I'm gonna see if this hopefully shows through. See how, how faint that is? Now, I do have the opacity of this color, which I'm using here, which is black. I do have it about maybe, let's see, at 62%. Even if I, even if I put that all the way up to 100%, it gets a little darker, but it's not like a full 100% black. And I like that because what this does is it kind of brings me back or reminds me of working with traditional uh, black India ink, I have a bottle right here, Black Magic. Um, if this is not really opaque. You almost need to use like several washes or layers, especially if you're trying to cover a large area of ink, if you're doing this traditionally, you know, with a pencil or uh, with your, your brush on paper. And I like that effect for that very reason that I can still impart this effect if I wanted to, if I'm painting, let me, let me back this back down to where I normally use it, which is about 60%. I can kind of create these washes and the way the, the, the pixels, or I, I guess, yeah, I guess the way they overlap creates this really cool looking layered effect. And I often will use this for really organic things, maybe like tree bark, maybe even rocks. Um, if, if I'm, creating the right shapes. It could even be like flowers or bu brush, uh, like, like bushes, like, you know, in the brush. Uh, so I like this for, for giving me that, kind of like that, I don't know, consolation of not really working with ink on paper, 
but having that same like washed out effect, which is something that if I'm working in Procreate, I can utilize that because if I'm scanning this, say into Photoshop, I, you know, you could leave this and there's ways to kind of wash, uh, to clear out the white behind it. But usually for comic book artwork, what I do is I just bitmap the artwork and I just, I call it a day and then I start coloring it. But with, with it Procreate, because everything is just what I call like first generation, like everything's being done within this application. There's no scan in, it's done totally in the app. I'm able to utilize like layers underneath it. So I don't have to worry. In other words, I don't have to worry about clearing out the white of the background. Uh, and that's what's really cool about working digitally. But this brush is, is pretty cool brush. I like it again for this kind of like faded out look. Uh, I can paint over it or draw over it and create subsequent layers to get it really full and black. So not a main brush that I use for painting or inking figures particularly. It's more usually for backgrounds I find myself using it for. Uh, and that's it. So pretty much for inking, I'm using the IGB Crow Quill pen technical pen, an ink bleed pen, and the Jasinski ink pen. Uh, I want to show just a quick little kind of inking demo here. So I'm going to get rid of this. And I've got this page here, which uh, I have, it's already been published on my website a few weeks back, but I wanted to kind of show the pen in action. So I've got this like, kind of like this onion skin here, placed over it kind of lightly so you can see it washed out, see it's off. Now it's on. It's just a layer of light thrown on there. So I'm going to go into or use my Crow Quill, the IGB Crow Quill pen, and I'll set it here. I've got a preset on the size here to, um, I forget what size that is, 7%. So for me, when I'm going to start inking, let's say, let's just start with the face, because, like, you know, that's, that's usually like a pretty big, important part uh, is the face. I can have a pretty good, like, variety of line weights using this pen. And let's see, just drawing on here. And you know what? That is not looking good because I'm painting on the layer that I have blocked out. I need a clear, pure layer above that. Let's see if this works. That'll work. That's a lot darker. Okay. So you can see this right here. I can go really super light and then thicken it up. I'm drawing the hair here. really fine lines on there uh, something thick and then go to thin I'm drawing the hair this is just a really nice pen I like the way it feels uh, on the iPad on the screen the way it reacts to my movements and to my hand movements and my gestures uh, I haven't really done anything in fact I rarely adjust any of the settings within the pen itself Procreate. And what I mean by that is like, if I click like on the, the brush here, it brings up this pop up here, brush studio, where you can adjust the properties of the stroke here. I mean, there's so many things here that you can adjust. Uh, you just look down the left side here. There's so many things. Uh, generally, I, I like I said, I leave it just the way it is. And I kind of work with what just work with how the pen is set up. Uh, I haven't really found the need to make any kind of tweaks or adjustments. I just work kind of with what I'm given um, and for the most and like 100% 100% of the time it seems to work out for me. So this pen again, this IGB Crow Quill ink pen um, is available on creative market. At least that's where I found it. Uh, it's a good pen. Uh, the, the brush pack itself, you have to check to see what the cost is on that. To me, the brush pens are like, um, I've never, and I've bought pens packs before for like or brush packs before for like photoshop and appropriate as well i mean i think they run somewhere in the neighborhood of like five five or ten bucks in that neighborhood give or take and so uh, i highly re recommend this pen here if you like to kind of get like a, a digital inking pen that works and that's uh, has good variety and is relatively flexible as far as like handling a good I think it I think it handles well and I think it for my style it it just provides a really clean nice look to the artwork uh, my style kind of my style goes toward that I guess that uh, um, ideal uh, I don't have a scratchy or a, a rough artwork uh, style 
Um, I, if, uh, if you look at my stuff, I've, I've heard it before called very traditional looking. Uh, and by traditional, I, I think that kind of has like a classic or vintage kind of look to it. And, you know, you have to kind of ask, you know, well, what's vintage in comics? And, and you know, there are defined periods of like golden age, silver age, bronze age, and, and everything up to modern age in comic books. And, uh, you know, I can, you know, you just, you might be able to take a look at my work and say, oh yeah, maybe he's emulating so-and-so. Um, and for sure, I definitely do have my artists that I, you know, growing up that I idolized as far as their art. Um, this is like pre-internet, by the way. So all these artists, to be quite honest, all the artists that I have followed, this was like way, way before the internet. And so the only thing that I had to really go off of was just the comic books. And then years later, uh, there was this thing called publication called Wizard Magazine that, that had a little more like insights into the the writers and the artists and, and the industry. But none of it was really like, spread, nothing was really current, right? Because it, it, stuff gets printed back then and, and it's it's like, how many months old is it? So it's not like the, the quote unquote beauty of the internet, which everything's happening, you know, you know at the minute, uh, by the minute. So. Uh, anyway, this is the pen I like using when I'm making my comic book series. Uh, I know that uh, I've, I've done articles and have other videos about working digitally versus uh, versus traditionally. Um, I'm in the space right now where I'm just really enjoying working digitally. And a lot of times for my own artwork, I will work digitally. Uh, I've taken a few commissions this year where it's like original artwork and I'm getting commissioned to do like uh, an original piece of artwork. And so I'm, you know, at that point I'm working with pencil, Bristol board, markers, pens, brushes, India ink, whiteout, uh, stuff like that, you know, materials, real world materials, you know, pen and ink, ink on paper. And uh, I'm, I'm a, an, I am adept at using either one, but for me working digitally, using my iPad to, to ink, into uh, to draw with is just so much more of a time saver. Uh, there's less that I have to set up with when it comes to uh, prepping the artwork. You know, there's no paper, there's no there's no markers, there's no rulers, there's no. Uh, sometimes when I'm working on paper, I'll sometimes use masking tape to to like tape off a corner or to tape off a border so that I can like kind of ink cleanly, get a clean edge when I ink, and then you know tear off the paint, tear off the paper, a little masking tape off of the edge of a border so that I have a nice clean edge so you don't show these passing through here. So I, I really just uh, enjoy working digitally these days uh, and more specifically working on my iPad Pro. So this is just like a quick little look here into the pens I like using in my workflow for when I'm inking my comic books. Um, there again i'm working in procreate as you can see here on my ipad and these are my favorite brushes so happy inking if you have any questions just post them in the comments below and i will catch you in the next video thanks for watching